Team Deathmatch. Rangers lead the way. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going over the weapons in World at War Zombies. So I have had a lot of experience with the World at War weapons because I have played a lot. And I mean a lot of World at War. I've had to really do a lot of testing within the last few weeks because some of these weapons are really weird in World at War. Also, the health system in World at War is actually slightly different than Black Ops 1, 2, 3, and 4. Some people may not know that, but... I will go over that in another video. I'm not going to talk about that today. Before I get into the video, I'm obviously going to go over the criteria, which starting now, actually, my goal is to do a series based off of ranking every weapon in every Call of Duty Zombies Treyarch game from World at War to Black Ops 4. So I will do World at War today. We've already done Black Ops 3. I made that a few months ago. If you want to watch that, that's on the channel. The next one that I rank in terms of weapons will be Black Ops 1, and we will go in order. Black Ops 1 will be the next one. Black Ops 2 will be sometime later, of course. And then Black Ops 4 will be the final one for the specific games. However, at some point, it may take a while, but I am eventually going to rank every single weapon from World at War to Black Ops 4 in one single list. So because I'm doing this series, I'm actually going to have a set criteria for every single game so that way we stay consistent with the patterns of every single game that way no game has a specific advantage or disadvantage so this criteria that i created i'm calling the easy p40 zombie weapon ranking rules but i'm gonna go over that real quick if you don't care about the criteria and you just want to watch the video for fun you can skip at this point in the video and you could just start the ranking right now however i strongly recommend that you pay attention to the criteria because it's going to help you throughout the list and if you want to be more informed I would definitely listen to the criteria. The first rule is that we are primarily going over the pack-a-punch versions of the weapons. Unpack-a-punch versions play a minor role. The reason for this is because pack-a-punch is such a significant factor in high rounding. We really have to prioritize that over the unpack-a-punch versions. Number two, double pack-a-punch of any kind is banned. Not all the games have double pack-a-punch. It's not fair to compare a RK5 from Black Ops 3 with Deadwire 2. One of the best guns in World at War or Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 3. You can make any gun an infinite damage wonder weapon, which is just not fair to compare to the older games. Number three, double tap of any kind is actually going to be banned from this. And the reason why is because World at War and Black Ops 1 have double tap 1.0. Black Ops 2 and 3 have double tap 2.0. Black Ops 4 does not have double tap of any kind. So double tap is gone for the sake of consistency yet again. It's not fair to compare guns with double tap that do not have double tap. So we're just going to exclude double tap just in general. Number four, attachments are banned unless they come with the weapon by default. So for example, Black Ops 3 or Black Ops 4, where you can put attachments on your weapon and customize them how you would like to. We're not going to allow that. Older games, you couldn't customize your weapons. I don't think it's fair that we get to put fast mags and all this other stuff on the newer weapons. So yet again, we're just going to stay without the attachments. Now, there are some guns in a game like Black Ops 1 where you pack punch uh, the Galil and you get a red dot sight. That's fine. We're going to let that be. It's not going to be a huge deal and it's not going to affect the rankings that much. So we're going to let that be. Number five, some guns may be disqualified if they fit into an abnormal category or don't have a pack punch variant. I'm here to tell you right now, there's a couple guns, especially in World at War, that you cannot pack-a-punch because they are not on Reese and they are on a different map that does not have pack-a-punch. Those guns will be banned from the list, including the one today. An abnormal category, let's talk about that a little bit. So I believe there are three different categories of weapons in Zombies. There's the regular weapons that we pretty much go over, the wonder weapons, and the special weapons. Regular weapons are basic weapons that we use and we rank just in general. Stuff like the Dingo, the, the Galil, the ICR, the, the AK-40, you know, stuff like that. Those are regular weapons. Wonder weapons. Basically how I define a wonder weapon is if it's a mythical type weapon that is extremely overpowered and not meant to be in any way a regular weapon and shoots not regular bullets. The way I define special weapons is something that has infinite ammo or infinite damage that scales throughout the rest of the game that could be defined as a special weapon. Another thing with special weapons, a weapon that may have to cool down. 
that's another great way to define special weapons. Number six, performance in high rounds is the primary thing we are looking at. Some other factors taken into consideration include damage, mainly to the head, we're mainly looking for headshot damage, ammo, both in magazine and reserve, rate of fire, mobility, reload speed, recoil, accuracy, ability to save you, ability to earn points. This is primarily in that order. So damage obviously being the most important and the ability to save you and ability to earn points kind of being the little bonus things. Number seven, wall weapons do not have any type of advantage unless two guns are really similar and one of them is a wall weapon. We are looking for the better performing weapon, not the more convenient weapon. The reason for this is because a lot of times people will just choose a wall weapon because it's easy to grab. You'll grab it most of the time and it's just a nice option to have off the wall, easy to get. I'm not looking for that. These lists are prioritizing looking at the pure performance of the weapons themselves. I trust you guys to pick whatever weapons fit your type and is really convenient for you. I'm just here to tell you which ones perform better. That's my goal. Number eight, all wonder weapons and special weapons are disqualified. I think that's a really easy one to go over. Number nine, we are looking at this primarily from a solo perspective. Co-op matters some, but does not matter as much as solo. So obviously because World at War has no pack punch on the first three maps, there are bound to be some guns that got banned from this. So let's go ahead and go over those real quick. The regular M1 Grant, the scoped car 98K, the Springfield, the Arasaka, the sawed off double barrel, the deployable Browning M1919, the deployable MG42, the deployable FG42, and the deployable BAR, as well as one other weapon. I'm gonna go over these first few weapons first because all of the ones that I just named don't have a pack punch. That's why I did not. Now you may say, well, the MG42 and the Browning do. They do, but not as a deployable one. So just so we're clear, those are the deployable ones in Nocturne, Toten, and Verrupt. Those are not going to be counted. We're just counting the primary version that you see in Durice. Yeah, so basically it's the best weapons from Durice. Aside from one weapon, the flamethrower. This is probably going to be controversial, but I'm not including the flamethrower in this list because I consider the flamethrower more as a special weapon, as I talked about in the criteria, because it has infinite ammo, there's a cooldown for it, and it acts more like a special weapon because of the damage being scaled. It's quite interesting, and there's no other weapon like it. It's hard for me to include it in a list like this where I'm comparing it to regular guns because I don't really consider it to be a regular gun. If I were to include the flamethrower on this list, where would I put it? Number one, without question, I would not put, I would not hesitate. I would put this directly at number one because you can use the flamethrower in the higher rounds while these others, you can't really use them past around 40, maybe 50, to, unless you're wanting to kill dogs with some of the shotguns and whatnot. The flamethrower has been used to get to such high rounds in World at War rounds that none of these guns you're going to be using to get at all. It, it, it became a hard choice for me for the flamethrower, but I want to really specify if you are playing World at War, is the flamethrower good? Yes, absolutely. It's not gonna be great to camp with, but if you're going to high rounds and you're training, the flamethrower is a good option. Now that I've got that out of the way, I think we can get into the regular list. Uh, yeah, so we have 19 weapons available. If you're wondering how much Darice I've played in the last month, uh, all of them, that's how much I've played. I played all of them. Anyways, let's just go ahead and get started with the list. Number 19, this is to nobody's surprise, the Car 98K. The Car 98K is a bolt action sniper rifle that you can buy off the wall for 200 points in the starting room. The issue I have with the Car 98K is that it is just far too slow firing and it doesn't have the amount of damage needed to compensate that slow air fire and it also doesn't have great mobility either. There is no real reason to use the Car 98K unless you're just messing around. Sniper rifles in World at War don't really fit well in the game because the hitboxes are really weird and because of that the sniper rifles do have a little bit of a disadvantage. Number 18, I have the Panzer Shrek. Some people like the Panzer Shrek but the problem with the Panzer Panzer Shrek is you are gonna get yourself freaking killed with this thing. Something about the Panzer Shrek that some people may not know is that your mobility actually gets boosted up whenever you pack punch it. It becomes fully automatic rocket launcher. The problem is, is that the, the weapon just doesn't do that much damage. I thought it would do a lot more damage, but unfortunately the Panzer Shrek just doesn't do what you need it to do. I definitely don't recommend using this in solo. You are gonna get yourself freaking killed with it. Put that thing away. Number 17, this one might shock people. Actually may not, the bar. I don't like the bar at all. Every time I see this thing, I get so upset. The problem with the bar is that it just shoots not fast at all. The damage is low, the ammo is low, the mobility is mid. 
you're just not going to need the bar in any case scenario at all. The bar upgraded is called the Widowmaker. The reason it's called this is because if you use this, your wife will become a widow. If you're using this thing past round 20, you're a freaking idiot. Number 16, the Colt. The Colt is an explosive rocket launcher. An explosive rocket launcher, yeah, because a, a rocket launcher isn't going to be explosive. It becomes kind of like the Mustang and Sally, except for you only get one of them and not do wield Mustang and Sally. It is a lot slower in its rate of fire. You also get slightly less ammo than the Mustang and Sally. The reason I have the Colt this low is because, yet again, you're probably going to get yourself killed with this. Colt's just not really something that I, I think is that useful at all. I see so many people talk about how good it is, but I never see them use it in a high round case scenario. I have not once seen someone go to high rounds on World at War and say, you know what? I need the freaking Colt. Not one freaking person. And the reason why is because it's not that good. People talk about it like, oh yeah, it's so fun to use. It's great. No, it's not. It's fun. Yes, I agree. But the Colt is not as good as people say it is. You want to know something that's interesting? The Colt and the Panzer Shrek have the same freaking damage. The only difference is that the Colt has a little bit better mobility and it has a little bit more ammo. That's the only difference. So if you're saying the Panzer Shrek is bad, well, guess what? The Colt's the same freaking thing, except it's got a little bit more ammo and a little bit more ability. That's it. I know some people are gonna disagree with that, but still I don't see a reason to use the Colt over a lot of these weapons. Number 15, I have the Goor. Probably pronounced that wrong, but I've been pronouncing it the Goor the whole time I've been playing World at War, so we're just gonna roll with it. It's just a semi-automatic assault rifle that doesn't shoot fast and doesn't have a ton of damage i will just go ahead and stay straight up that the next weapon as well is the carbine at number 14. the reason i put the carbine ahead of the goer i'm going to compare these two a lot is because that they're basically the same weapon they do the same amount of damage except for there's a slight difference between ammo and rate of fire the carbine has slightly less ammo but the rate of fire is much better than that of the Goor, and because of this, you're going to kill zombies much faster with the Carbine than you would with the Goor. So I strongly recommend the Carbine more than the Goor, even though neither weapon is really that great. However, we're also going to move on to the number 13 spot, which again is very similar to the Carbine and the Goor, this being the Imploder. The Imploder is a grenade launcher that is fully automatic, and comes with over 40 grenades and it's very useful and it's going to get yourself killed sometimes but it's freaking awesome oh yeah and it comes with an m1 grand the m1 grand is the same damage as well as the goer and the carbine all three of those semi-automatic assault rifles have the same damage the only difference is all of them have different ammo types slightly different rate of fires and the m1 grand also comes with a grenade launcher attachment which is the only reason I'm putting the M1 Grand ahead of these two. Just make sure that if you use the M1 Grand grenade launcher, you're really freaking careful with it because you can definitely get yourself killed with it. I also will say that within the three grenade launchers or rocket launchers that I have talked about, the Panzer Shrek, the Colt, and the M1 Grand Imploder, all three of those have the same damage. Number oh gosh, what the heck was that? Number 12, I've got the PTRS. The best sniper rifle in World at War Zombies easily. The PTRS is a really heavy sniper rifle that does a lot of damage and it's very fun to use. So something about the PTRS that I wanted to figure out was how much damage did it do and when would it stop one-shotting. The headshot damage for this is 10,000 headshot damage according to the Wikipedia statistics. So I wanted to go on World at War and see if this was accurate. And when I went to test it, I noticed that there was something off. This is when I figured out that the World at War health system was completely different. Because you want to know when I stopped one-shotting with this thing? I consider if you pop the head off of a zombie and it dies, I consider that to be a one-shot. Guess when it stopped doing that? Round 44 without double tap so needless to say i knew there was something off so because of this i completely had to go and research some of the hell stuff people are saying that the hell system is completely the same thing as black ops 1 2 and 3. not true at all i'm gonna go over that in another video but for now move on back to the ptrs the ptrs is a nice weapon to use in co-op but if you're using this thing in solo, it's going to be a bit dangerous because it doesn't fire fast enough. It's not going to be very useful in solo, in my opinion, even though it does have a decent amount of ammo and a really good amount of damage. The problem is everything else. It's a sniper rifle. Snipers are harder to use in World at War than it is in the other games. Also, 
it's just too slow to move with and to shoot you're not going to kill zombies very quickly even though the penetration power is ridiculous you're going to be at such a low mobility that you're not going to be able to train with the ptrs so it's going to be at a massive disadvantage there is some potential with it however i only really recommend that you use this in co-op not in solo. Number 11, the trench gun. I think this gun is also a little bit overrated in the sense that some people are calling this the best shotgun in the game. Not true at all. The trench gun is going to fall off in the early 20s, so I don't recommend that you use this for that long. If you try to use this in, in the late 20s or even in the 30s, the only thing it's going to be good for is the dogs. Anything else, I don't recommend at all. It's not a horrible weapon, but it just doesn't do as much damage as I thought it was going to do. We are at the top 10 we're going to move on to the FG-42, our number 10 spot. I've always really liked the FG-42. The only problem is, is that every time I would use the FG-42, I noticed that there would be something wrong with it. I would try to use this for higher rounds because I always thought this would be a great wall weapon to use because it's a wall weapon and it's in a great spot. It's got a lot of ammo and the firepower for this thing, it shoots so freaking fast. It's got a thousand RPM. But the problem with the FG-42 lies within two things the damage and the recoil the damage for this is one of the worst machine gun damages i have seen in all of call of duty zombies it does 330 headshot damage which is trash secondly the recoil for this thing is not very good at all so to hit the headshots it's going to be hard enough as is and when you do it's not going to do much damage at all so the problem with the fg42 is those two things the ammo is really good the rate of fire is really good it's got potential but the problem lies within the damage and the recoil, which is why it falls this low on the list. Number nine, the MP40. Really close between this and the FG42 because the FG42 does have a lot more ammo, but the MP40 is going to put out lots more damage. It's got a thousand headshot damage, even though the ammo is really low. I still prefer the MP40 because it's going to kill quicker than the FG-42 will. It's just more of a stable weapon and a more consistent weapon than the FG-42, which is why I recommend it over the FG-42. One of the problems I have with it is that it has one of the worst wall buy spots I have ever seen. You have to go literally to Antarctica in order to buy this thing off the freaking wall. It's a really good point weapon. Obviously, everyone knows that the MP-40 is a fantastic point weapon, but as a high round weapon, it's not as good as a lot of these other weapons. If it had more ammo, I would put it higher up on the list. Number eight on our list, we have the STG-44. The STG is a lot similar to the MP-40 where it's got a slower rate of fire for a machine gun. This is more of an assault rifle, really, but the mobility is similar to that of an SMG. What's better about the STG, though, is one, the ammo is better. Two, the wall by spot is better. Three, it's a more stable weapon. The SDG is just an overall solid weapon. It's nothing bad, but again, there's just better weapons. Now we're starting to get into some of the really good weapons of World at War. Number seven, I have the 357 Magnum. For those who love the Python from Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2, here is the original Python, the Magnum. The Magnum is basically a sniper rifle that you have in a pistol. It's a fantastic weapon to have as a secondary. It's really powerful and it can one-shot up until the 20s. It really just depends based off of the health system of World of War. It's so inconsistent. I wouldn't recommend the Magnum to have as a primary weapon, but if you need a good secondary weapon, this is a solid one to have for zombies. It kind of acts as a shotgun in a way, but I don't think it kills dogs nearly as well as the shotguns do, so just take that into account. But if you need something that's going to be quick to kill, the Magnum's not a bad choice. Number six, I have the double barrel shotgun. Easily the better option between the two shotguns. It's not even remotely close. It's going to do more damage. Yeah, you're gonna be without a few more bullets and the reload is gonna have to happen very frequently, but it's going to be well worth it considering that the trench gun is gonna be just too slow to kill zombies. The double barrel is much more consistent with its damage. It's much more consistent with the way that it can save you if you're in a rough area. The double barrel is slightly better for dogs than the trench gun, in my opinion, just because of the way that the double barrel, if you're going to hit your first shot and it doesn't kill the dog, the second shot will. So that's why I recommend the double barrel over the trench gun because of its rate of fire being faster. So if you need to put damage out really, really quickly, you can fire both shots really quickly. Trench gun is going to be kind of useless in the late 20s. However, the double barrel is going to last approximately five to seven rounds longer than the trench gun with its one shot capability. So I definitely recommend that you use the double barrel over the trench gun. Number five on this list, I have the Browning. This was the probably the hardest part of the list before I made it. If you're playing solo, 
I would not recommend using this ahead of the other four weapons. However, if you're playing co-op, I think this is better than the two weapons ahead of this that are at four and three. But I'm putting it at number five because I have several issues with the Browning. One, the rate of fire is average to slightly below average, especially compared to the ones that are ahead of this. Two, the reload speed is horrible. It's the worst reload speed in the game, and it's not even close. Three, the mobility is as low as you can possibly get. It is horrible. The only real thing the Browning has going for it is ammo. If you take away the ammo, it's left as a just basic, not that good weapon at all. But because it has a lot of ammo, it is decent. But the problem is, is that if you're in solo, you're not going to be able to hold it down with just the Browning in the 20s. After about round 25, you need to get rid of this thing. If you do not get rid of this thing by round 25, you're going to get yourself killed. Do not keep this thing after 25 if you're playing solo. Now, if you're playing co-op and you guys are just kind of sitting on the catwalk, you guys are just kind of covering up, the Browning's not bad for that, right? When you have a little bit of help. But if you're in solo, the Browning is not going to cover you for as long as you may think it will. Number four on the list, I have the Thompson. The Thompson is a really good all-around balanced submachine gun. Good amount of damage. It's got a decent rate of fire and the mobility on it is really good. This is why I put it ahead of the Browning because it does pretty much everything better than the Browning except for it just doesn't have quite as much ammo as the Browning does. If you're in a co-op game, like I said, I would say that the Browning is better than this and the number three spot as well. However, I just think that if you're in solo, I have more success with the Thompson than I do with the Browning, which is why I'm gonna put the Thompson ahead of the Browning. You really could flop three to five any way you want to, but really the Thompson is just such a solid weapon. It's also a really nice point weapon that I recommend no matter what map you're playing. It just kills so much faster than the Browning, which is ultimately why I put it ahead of it. Number three, I have the Type 100. Again, this is really similar to the Thompson where it's a wall buy. It's a submachine gun that can get you points. It has a very similar stat line to the Thompson in the way in which it has slightly more damage, but slightly less ammo. I prefer the Type 100, though, because I think the damage output of it is just a little bit better than the Thompson's. Now, the Thompson has a better wall by spot, but I think the better performing weapon is the Type 100. Type 100, I will also take over the Browning and Solo. However, if I'm playing co-op and trying to cover the catwalk with friends, I probably would rather have the Browning for that. Well, it really just depends on what you're trying to do within these three weapons. You can put them however you want to, but these are three, four, and five, definitely on my list, in my opinion. All right, top two. I think we already know what the top two are, but we're going to go over them anyway. Number two, the MG42. I used to think this was number one, but given the research I've done doing... Uh, man, I can't speak. I used to think the MG42 was the best weapon in World at War, but... It's not. The MG42's problems are that the mobility is really low and that the damage is really low as well. Those are my main two issues with it. The rate of fire is fantastic. The weapon itself is just such a beast. If you're camping with this, it is going to mow down the zombies. The ammo is also fantastic. A lot of people I see compare the MG42 to the Browning. I'm telling you right now, there is no comparison between those two other than the fact that they're both LMGs and they have a lot of ammo. A lot of people will say that the Browning is very similar in the way that it kills the MG42, all that kind of stuff. I'm telling you right now, here are the facts. The facts are, the Browning is not better at anything than the MG42. Factually, okay? MG42 shoots faster. MG42 reloads faster. The MG42 is more accurate. The MG42 and the Browning have the same ammo. They have the same mobility. The MG42 kills quicker. The MG42 has more damage. There's no upside to the Browning compared to the MG42. So no, the Browning is not better than the MG42 in any way, shape, or form. But yeah, no, I love the MG42. It's a great weapon. I highly recommend it. We're moving on to the PPSA. I mean, the number one spot, which I, I guess everyone freaking knows already. It's the PPSA. Yeah, to no one's surprise, PPSH number one. Now, I know the PPSH is a fan favorite weapon among everybody. But the thing is, I want to be very, very clear about with the PPSH is that it's actually not as good as people say it. Fantastic weapon. The way it fires is awesome. It's got probably the best sound of any weapon in Call of Duty, period, other than maybe the intervention from Modern Warfare 2. It shoots freakishly fast. The damage is decent. The damage is not as good as the other SMGs. However, 
it is still decent. It does 600 headshot damage. The ammo in this is that of an LMG. It has ridiculous amounts of ammo. The reload speed is good. The mobility is good. Everything about it is good. Hope you guys had a great time watching the video and, and stuff. I, yeah, I, I, wow, what, what an outro. Man, I'm stuttering like crazy. I need to freaking go. <clears throat> This is going to be a nightmare to edit. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you have any questions down below, ask them. Feel free to. The next video will probably be going over the Black Ops 3 specialist weapons. However, I've already gotten started on the Black Ops 1 weapon ranking already. That list will be out at some point. I don't want to rush the rankings of the weapons. And the reason I don't want to is because they require a lot of research. They require a lot of testing. And I really want to make sure I do these the right way. And so they may take a little bit longer to do. Also, we have a Discord server. If you're wanting to join, you can. I'll put a link in the description down below. All right. So, y'all.